In this playthrough, we try a more direct approach of the Golden Cat mission. Co-creator directors Harvey Smith and Rafael Colantonio are here to walk you through it. Okay, so this time the player has done a different sequence leading uh, through the streets leading up to the Golden Cat and it has come in through the rooftops. It's a lot of vertical movement in the game, uh, a lot of mobility. In the previous area, you can get dropped off in the river and you're here to kill Custis and Morgan Pendleton. And uh, therefore, there are several different ways to enter the Golden Cat area. In this playthrough, we're going to do very brutally. Are you okay? Now Morgan's on the first floor. I need to get the men in position. The ivory room. All I can tell you is, it's very heavily soundproofed. I'll leave the rest to your imagination. Custis is easy with me. Why would anyone pay for that? Rats. Plague. Licks. Bunch of crap. Huh? This is a drop attack. You talked to that nice girl again. The one I told you about. Why is you're at the golden cat, right? Yeah. Obviously, playing this way has got consequences. Uh, some of them is that um, we track the number of death and, and uh, innocence that the player kill, and this derives the ending, but also derives some of the uh, little story beats all along the game. And besides, playing this way is actually very consuming in terms of resource. So uh, the player uses those resources like powers and his mana and, uh, and his health potions, and he has to use them carefully. Maybe we're checking out. Take out his legs. So here the players stop time just before the guards have fired their pistols, and he's planting a spring razor there. When time resumes, it will kill them both. The game's combat uh, with a sword, the melee combat, involves blocking and counter-attacks if, if the blocking is timed correctly. I hear you. I'm a <laughs> I'll have you gripped and put to work in the... <laughs> so both targets have been assassinated. summoning rats. Once the rats are in the world, they're like little AIs. So sometimes the guards win, sometimes the rats win. And here the player has possessed one of his own rats and is now getting away. And that's the end of the violent, messy playthrough of the Golden Cat.
So this is a very different area. The previous area with posh and pretty, this is like desolated, abandoned. Uh, this is actually the area where there are weepers. It's called the flooded district. And uh, there are those tall boys here uh, that are preventing the weepers. The weepers are the plague infected people. Those tall boys, their job is to prevent them from accessing the rich area. So they will shoot at the weepers and they will shoot at anything that uh, tries to get through, including the player. using wind blast to bounce back the arrows at the tall boys. Using wind blast to knock the tall boys phosphorescent arrows back at them is another combination of game mechanics that we did not plan for, but players found it quite fun. So we made some small changes to help support it. These stilt walker guards, the tall boys as they're called, have uh, vulnerable tanks of whale oil on their backs uh, that they use for their uh, incendiary arrows. And so periodically the player is shooting at those tanks, stopping time, trying to get behind them. The shields all around them are actual breakable wooden shields, so they absorb some of the player's shots, but periodically the player breaks one of them off. Here the player just possessed a tall boy and he's going to escape the area uh, through those uh, wall of lights here via tall boy. So the wall of light is a Tesla-like security device that's a powerful electrical field and uh, the guards at the beginning of their shift are attuned to it so they can walk through it but the player cannot unless he hacks it. Thank you for watching. For an alternate approach, check out youtube.com slash dishonored or dishonored.com.